and now we get the opportunity to hear from FDA um, share their uh, reasoning and experience with this initiative uh, and why the agency has invested the resources uh, in these uh, patient-focused drug development meetings and how they actually will use the information you'll be sharing today. So with that, I'd like to introduce our speaker, Pujita Vedya, the uh, Acting Director of the Decision Support and Analysis Team at the Office of Strate Strategic Programs in FD's, FDA's Center for Drug Evaluation and Research. This is the component of FDA that uh, regulates uh, and has the approval authority for all new drugs. Um, and specifically, Pujita's office is the office that launched and has administered the patient-focused drug development program. Pujita. Thank you, James. What a great turnout today. Um, this is quite amazing. I remember when um, we received the first le the letter of intent from Kathleen, as she mentioned, about two years ago when this is just getting started. So kudos to you all definitely for this. So I'm happy to come and talk to you today here about the Patient Focused Drug Development Initiative that, um, that we launched five years ago um, under our, the fifth authorization of the Prescription Drug User Fee Act. As James mentioned, I'm Pujita Vaidya, and I've been working on this initiative for five years now, or almost over five years. So to get us started, I'm gonna start off with showing you our benefit risk framework. For human drug review, FDA has a benefit risk framework, which is a structured tool to help communicate the regulatory decisions externally to stakeholders, including drug developers, healthcare providers, patients, and others, and to internally help reviewers kind of keep the big picture in mind throughout the review process when thinking about the different dimensions that are most important and critical to regulatory decision making. I'd like to point out the top two rows there, which are shaded in yellow, the analysis of condition and current treatment options. This really sets up, that helps um, us set up the therapeutic context, thinking about the severity of condition and the unmet medical need. And this is where we really see the patient-focused drug development meetings and the input with, that we get from you here today help feed in to really provide that context, the clinical context. There are a number of other ways also, like the clinical outcomes assessments, which include patient-reported outcomes that also inform other rows of the framework, such as the, the benefit and the risk rows shaded in blue. So people living with a disease have a direct stake in the outcomes of drug development. They also have a unique ability to contribute input that can inform drug development and evaluation. As part of our commitments, as I mentioned, FDA convened 24 meetings, patient-focused meetings, in a five-year pe um, period, each meeting focused on a specific disease area. These meetings help advance a more systematic approach to gather this type of input that we hear from you more broadly. This input helps inform the collective understanding of the therapeutic context of drug development, which is important to our role as regulators and the role of developers and others throughout the drug development process. Here's just a list of the meetings throughout the five years, um, the different disease areas that we covered in the five years under our commitment. You'll see that it, there's a pretty broad range here from rare diseases like inborn errors of metabolism and Chagas disease to more prevalent diseases like psoriasis. So what comes out of these meetings? Each patient-focused drug development meeting results in a report that captures the patient's input from the meeting in the participant's own words. We call these summary reports the voice of the patient report. Input from these meetings provide important patient contacts that can support FDA as they conduct benefit risk assessments for products under review, also help advise drug sponsors on their drug development programs, or identify opportunities for further discussions in a particular area. We also believe these meetings can have value to drug development more broadly, for example, by helping to identify areas of unmet need, such as aspects of patient's condition that is not currently being addressed in current therapies. This input may also help um, developers as they identify or create tools used to measure the benefit of potential therapies 
And we have also seen the potential in these meetings to help raise awareness and channel engagement within the patient community. So we are here today um, because of the externally led patient-focused drug development initiative that we launched as a parallel effort to our FDA's patient-focused drug development initiative. We really started hearing a lot about the growing external interest in expanding the efforts to gather patient input in support of drug ev development and evaluation. We recognized that the 24 disease areas that we had identified for our FDA-led meetings did not cover the breadth of disease areas that are currently out there. So to help expand the benefits of the, this initiative, in June 2015, we started welcoming patient organizations to identify and organize their their own patient-focused collaborations to ge generate very similar public input on other disease areas. And this is why we are all here today. So as of today, we're conducting our last um, patient-focused drug development meeting under the PDUFA commitment. And um, out of, after have, having conducted 24 of these types of meetings, the Office of Strategic Programs, which is my office, we've definitely learned a lot. And we've also had, we've also had several externally led meetings that have taken place as well. So from all of this, what we've really learned is that individuals with chronic disease conditions are experts on what it is like to live with their condition. And they are the ones that are able to clearly articulate specific disease impacts and treatment benefit. We've heard at meetings that individuals with the conditions, their chief complaints may not be factored explicitly into drug development plans, such as, as endpoints and measures of benefits planned in, planned in clinical trials. Individuals with the condition want their experiences described using the words that they consider best to describe um, how it feels to live with a condition. Also, we've seen that they, they, individuals are enthusiastic and willing to engage in all matters possible, such as helping in the work to develop and evaluate new treatments. So where do we go from here? As we move into the next phase of patient-focused drug development and thinking about enhancing the incorporation of patient perspective into drug development and regulatory decision-making, we recognize the need to engage a wider community to develop systematic approaches to bridge from these initial patient-focused drug development meetings to more methodologically sound approaches to collect patient input so that it becomes data that can further inform regulatory decision-making. We also recognize the need to provide guidance to patient communities, researchers, and drug developers on pragmatic and methodologically sound strategies, pathways, and methods to gather and use this patient input or patient experience data that can be submitted to the FDA for use across the drug development programs. So over the course of FDA's engagement with patients in the, in the PFDD effort, we have broadened the scope of what it is needed to better incorporate the patient's voice in drug development and decision making. It may include many things and likely include different priorities for different stakeholders, but we think the goals of a more patient-focused approach to drug development include, but, not, but are not limited to, development of treatments that are meaningful that are meaningfully addressed aspects of disease that are most important to patients, tailoring clinical trials to the needs of patients, reflecting patients' perspectives on the benefits and harms of treatment in drug evaluation, and ensuring that the information that comes out of the drug development programs accurately represents those benefits and harms and is directly relevant to patients' treatment decisions. So thinking about where we go from here, um, in patient-focused drug development meetings, you know, we gather this patient perspective at these meetings, but you may be wondering how we use this information. We collectively, I would say, drug companies want to hear patient perspectives because it can give them ideas about what to measure in clinical studies. They can then select or develop particular questionnaires that they use that measure these important concepts and engage with the FDA as they develop treatments. 
The information from these meetings can also help support the FDA's review of clinical trial questionnaires to confirm that they adequately capture the individual's and caregiver's perspectives on health outcomes. Another advantage of these meetings is that they help us think about clinical study endpoints. At the end of the day, individual and caregiver input ultimately helps determine what is measured to provide evidence of treatment benefit, how best to me measure concepts in a clinical study, and what a, me a meaningful improvement is in treatment benefit. So if we, here are some additional resources that are, we have on our FDA website. So I strongly encourage you to um, go and take a look at, um, we have some um, past meetings that we've conducted, all of the reports that we've, uh, that we've published are on this, um, on this webpage, more information about the externally led meetings, and also uh, plans that we have for next step are listed in the 21st Century Cures um, work plan that we have developed. So with that, um, I just want to acknowledge uh, the Office of Strategic Programs, Teresa Mullen, and others on, our, on my staff that work on this effort. Um, Teresa Mullen is the lead of this initiative for CEDAR. Um, Office of New Drugs for working very closely with us um, throughout this process and our um, senior leadership as well. And finally, I'd like to end by saying we know that this, is, uh, this effort is not the end. It is a beginning. We believe it is a step in the right direction, and we look forward to the next steps in advancing the science and advancing the incorporation of patient input throughout the drug development process. So thank you so much.